Davenport, Pinot Noir. Um, anyone that uh, anyone that follows me or uh, or One Day Wednesday social media will know that Davenport uh, is an English maker from Sussex. He's one of my favourite makers, a guy called Will Davenport, um, and his Horsmanden white wine uh, is probably my favourite white wine ever. Um, and everyone I've introduced it to, it's also become their favourite white wine ever. So um, very interesting to see. Uh, the Pinot Noir, Diamond Field it's called, I don't know if you can say that on there, whether the word is good enough, um, but Davenport, uh, Diamond Field. Now, uh, I'm reviewing these wines on empty bottles, once I've drank them, uh, rather than drinking them live. One, because I think everyone has done the drink live thing before, and I don't think it's that cool. Uh, second, um, this I think gives me a bit more time to think about the wine rather than just kind of tasting it in the moment and trying to come up with something pithy or you know whatever descriptive um i think this is a bit better so i'm doing mine with uh coffee espresso in this instance um i'm going to tell you uh what i think of the wine with this one in particular i'm going to talk about food but i'm not going to talk about food often because wine food pairings is bullshit as far as i'm concerned uh and then i'm going to give you just some like a little bit of tech uh, information i'm going to nerd out a tiny bit but not too much so um a couple of things actually before we get started you might be able to see i don't know how well but you, you can you can see the sediment in the bottom still there yeah so um as far as it goes taste wise perfect uh full disclosure i love pinot noir probably my favorite red wine i'd say uh, sorry my favorite grape for red wine uh, i would say uh it's also um i like that kind of lightness uh to it pretty tasty um this in particular is really tasty it's uh i I'd, I'd say some would say it's medium i think it might be a little bit lighter than medium in my opinion um but when i got it i actually held it up next to a bottle of ribena which is down there held them up to the light together and it looked just like the ribena through the bottle um and it came out and it just did not disappoint um really 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 good wine i really enjoyed it uh yep comes the price tag uh there are cheaper pinot noirs um, that you can get, you can get some really, really good quality Pinot Noirs for less than you can get this for. Um, but this is really worth the extra couple of pounds. And if you look at some of the stuff that I've said on social media recently and over the last 12 months, if you're already spending eight pounds ish on a bottle of wine off the shelf, spend three or four more pounds. Wouldn't get you this. Definitely wouldn't get you this. Um, spend a couple more pounds and you can get you can level up if you're spending nine or ten or eleven pounds already you know another couple of pounds and you can really really level up um, I don't know what this retails for I know what we sell it for um, we do transparent pricing so we charge for the wine you know we the actual cost of the wine with no markup and, and we have a kind of um, a service charge on top for curating the boxes so but I'm not going to go into that price wise but um, they're a cheaper Pinot Noirs. They're a cheaper quality organic Pinot Noir. That's what I'm trying to say. But this is really, really good. So give it some consideration. If you want to hit something a bit higher, support English, support local growers as well. It's a big one. Okay, so um, I've given you my opinion. Very rare food thing for me. Um, I love a Pinot Noir with a steak. Always, always, always love a Pinot Noir with a steak. Um, I had this with a steak. Very lovely. Um, actually, I drank this over two days. So the first night I had it with a steak. Second night, uh, I don't know what I had it with, actually. But uh, first night I had it with a steak. It was so good. So, so tasty. And, you know, I'm, you can go through the social media and find uh, videos and pictures of me having, um, you know, 20 pound bottle uh, Sancerre or some Chardonnay, some really good Chardonnay or. Uh, even I remember drinking the Supernatural, uh, if you've not seen it, go through the social media, Supernatural um, Sav Blanc from, uh, from New Zealand. You see me having that with takeaway pizza. Like, I'm not a food pairing wine uh, kino. Um, I think wine should be good on its own. Uh, and you should enjoy wine and you should enjoy food together. Sometimes they gel really nicely. Sometimes you just enjoy them independently. But wine is often part of the entertainment uh, that goes with the food. So um, this went really well with the steak, especially the way I cook them. Uh, it was a ribeye, it was a bit of a you know, I love cooking, 
uh, it was a reverse save ribeye, uh, finished off fried, shallow fried in some butter, um, nice and crusty, uh, and it went with, from memory, I think some peppercorn sauce and some caramelised salt potatoes, um, oh, I should start a cooking show. Uh, okay, I'm going to go a little bit tech on this now, just to give you a little bit of information. First things first, uh, I don't know how good that is, 12%, you can see there. Now, I like my wines between 11 and 13% alcohol. Um, I don't like to taste too much alcohol when I drink the wine, um, which you can find a lot, but not always. So don't be tricked by other taste sensations um, from uh, from alcohol, but uh, I don't like to taste uh, too much alcohol when I drink wine. Second, sometimes excess alcohol, in my opinion, and a lot of people's opinion, I think, is used to cover the quality of the wine or the quality of the grapes, um, pump the alcohol content up a little bit. Um, so 11 to 13 is uh, is a sweet spot for me, and this is a 12, so it's smart. Um, I'm really into that. Um, I'm not going to nose on the tasting notes, by the way. I'm not a tasting note keynote. Uh, but what I am going to do is I'm just going to tell you some stuff that's actually on the back of the bottle, which I think is really, really important um, for this particular wine. Um, just because it's Davenport, and it's local, and it's UK, and it's made in Sussex, uh, I think this is important, so I'm going to read this direct from the bottle for you. This is made from a two-acre parcel of land of low-yielding Pinot Noir grapes. Not very many grown, low-yielding. They're not. There's not loads of them. Yeah. So it, that's that contributes to the price tag because there's very very low yield. You're not going to get loads of these. I don't know how many bottles there are a year. I'm going to tweet Will immediately after this and ask him how many bottles of this he managed to pump out in a year. This is the 17 vintage, by the way. Um, so I find that really, really, really exciting. Uh, this is mature for nine months in oak barrels in the UK. I'm pretty confident. Um, call me out on it, Will, if I'm wrong. Um, which I think is super cool. And it's bottled without filtration. Yeah? Pure Pinot Noir, naturally. That's the last sentence on the back of the bottle. Pure Pinot Noir, naturally. Um, buy this wine. If you see this wine, buy this wine. Buy it from us, ring me up. Send me a message on Facebook or uh, to the WhatsApp or to the website um, if you're interested in that one. That is 